Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and welcome to another edition of Breaking News. Today is Saturday. It's the 14th day of September 2024. And as always, we have a number of very important stories to bring to you that are in the process of fulfilling what the Bible says our world is going to be like at the time of the end of the age before the second coming of Jesus Christ. Do we do these stories every day? We're always amazed, but never surprised. Uh, for the first time, Israel has actually added the North to its goals in the war. They've officially said the issue with Hezbollah is now going to be the one that they're going to concentrate on now that Gaza is being mopped up. And so we're going to see another war seemingly very soon in the northern part of Israel. Our second headline, Hezbollah's war with Israel has actually become a fight for Israel's very existence because you can't exist as a country if you've got almost 70,000 people uh, that have been removed from their homes in the northern part of the country because of shelling constantly from your neighbors you know, over the, uh, over the border. Can you imagine, like here, if we had that happen in the United States, we had Mexico or Canada showing us, uh, you know, uh, 7,000 rockets in the last 11 months, we would probably want to rise up and protest if people had to move out of the, let's say, the border states up north to uh, some of the southern states or vice versa, southern states to up north the border with respect to Mexico. The people wouldn't be very happy, would they, living in these states, just to give you an, an analogy. And so this is what's going on with Israel and uh, we're going to see these being things fulfilled. Now, again, here's what we emphasize in uh, our breaking news. The necessity of certain things that must take place, as predicted in Scripture, to set up the many events that we know are going to event eventually occur, because the Bible tells us that. And so, as we've already mentioned many times in our book, 25 Signs We're Near the End, we list 25 major signs that are going to take place at the time of the end, according to Scripture, and we've seen that over 70 of the details of these 25 signs have already been fulfilled, and another 30 are in the process of being fulfilled. And so we know eventually it's going to happen. We just don't know when. And that's the real key. We got to be careful of saying it must happen within this time frame or soon. No, we don't know that. We know what's going to happen. It is happening, but the timing is up to the Lord. So we're going to emphasize that today. All right. Speaking of timing, we, we got the timeless truce. Uh, today, we continue on dealing with this, our series on our uh, 12 books on the subject of the Bible, which we're uh, each day on uh, here that we do on our website, Educating Our World, on our YouTube channel, and our, so our app, EOW with Don Stewart. We do have an app. I should probably mention it more. It could, people love it once they use it, get it from both of the app stores. Uh, we're going to uh, have a uh, another program today talking about does the Old Testament Apocrypha belong in the Bible, and it's going to continue on what we've been referring to, and that is the trustworthiness of the Bible, its reliability, and that we do know the exact parameters of both the Old and New Testament. There's no doubt about that, and that's what we're developing here, because we're going to get next into the reliability of it, historical reliability, and also the text says the same thing as originally written. So, base, And then, of course, showing their signs, it's more than just a, a human work, it's the Word of God. So we're in the process of developing this. And so please take advantage of it. Again, we'll talk about the Apocrypha today. Uh, these are a number of books, 14 or 15 books that the Roman Catholic Church adds to the New Testament that Protestants reject. And we talk about the reasons, some of the reasons why. And um, the fact is we want the same books, like we mentioned last time, that Jesus and the apostles had, the first century Jews had, with respect to the extent of the Old Testament. And it's the same uh, 39 books in our canon of scripture, the Protestants have uh, Jews divided differently, 22 or 24, uh, depending on how they divide it. But it's the same book, same writings, and that's that's the key. So you need to know about that. That's why we do this. So please uh, get a chance, listen to these, uh, uh, you know, the short little segments we do. They're not long, about 10 minutes each. Some even don't even go 10 minutes, but it'll, it'll encourage you, but also show what we do here on uh, Breaking News. Uh, together that whether we look at the historical accuracy of the Bible, the events of the past, it all fits together showing God exists. He's uh, running the world. He always has. He will continue to. And we can be very confident in him and his word. All right, let's get right to the, the headlines now. For the first time, Israel to add the north to the goals of the war. And this is huge. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to bring cabinet approval, the addition of the goal of returning the residents to the north, to their homes safely, to the goals of the war. Now, it's the Sabbath right now as we're doing the Shabbat. Tonight, they may, uh, the cabinet may meet tonight after the Shabbat's over tomorrow, Sunday. But the bottom line, they're going to make that announcement. Prime Minister Netanyahu will bring for the cabinet approval the addition of the goal of returning the residents to the north, 
safely uh, to, uh, as adding to the goals of the war. In other words, the specific goals are going to announce that. Channel 12 News reported um, last evening, Friday evening. A defense official said it's necessary to prepare for a long war in the North that will exact a heavy price, and sadly it is. According to Friday's report, Prime Minister uh, has a limited security consultation on Thursday night. He had one with Ministers Ron Dermer and Bizazio Smotrich, as well as the Shah's chairman, Ari Adairi, and decided during the meeting to bring this addition to the goals of the war for a vote in the cabinet. The report stated that the situation in the North requires attention, and the defense establishment has been asking the political echelon for quite some time to define the issue in terms of goals of the war. In other words, what good goals do we have? Because right now, it's just tit for tat. They've shot over you know 7,500 rockets at us. And we've been shooting back at them. And um, what, what are we going to keep this going forever? And they can't. So earlier this week, we, we mentioned this, Defense Minister Gallant visited the northern border where he received a briefing on the activities of the truth stationed there in stopping terrorists and protecting communities on the northern border on their exercise simulating and they were doing exercises simulating combat in Lebanese territory. He told the soldiers, I'm impressed by the determination, professionalism, and the dedication to the mission that has been going on here for almost a year, both in the north and the south. The center of gravity is moving north. We're about to complete our tasks in the south, but we have here a mission that has not been carried out, and that mission is to change the security situation and bring the residents back to their homes. Now, now it's about time this has been publicly stated and of course, the world as well as the Biden administration will be against it, particularly now that the election approaches. And uh, we don't know how long it's going to take. We don't know what the immediate end game will be. But we again, we stress we know what's going to happen in the long run that the northern border of Israel, according to scripture, will be a place of, you know, free of hostilities for some time in the future uh, to allow the Ezekiel 38 39 invasion to take place. Because as we continue to emphasize, that takes place at a time when the northern border is at peace, when it, they don't think they've got a threat there in the north. And of course, everything is just contrary to that today. All right, headline number two, Hezbollah's war with Israel has become a fight for Israel's existence, says a military source, an existential struggle is another way they put it. And so they, it's, they have shifted now from, you know, from su uh, supporting a fight with Hamas to a military, to a uh, fight now on the northern side of the country for the people there to keep the, the, you know, the goals of having a country that's secure. Hezbollah's war against Israel, which the terror organization began on October 8th of last year, and the, October 8th in Lebanon, actually October 7th, where they started in Israel, uh, has evolved now from supporting Hamas in Gaza to become an existential fight, a military source told the pro-Syrian Lebanese new outlet, Adyar, on Friday. The shift reportedly comes as Hezbollah understands that Israel is pivoting its military weight from Gaza to the northern front. And we, we talked about what Gallant just said. And so they're expressing now the readiness for military action. They've been preparing for a long time, for months doing this. And so um, the goal is, it's interesting, the objective in the war against Hezbollah would be to eliminate the Lebanese terror group completely. Now, one source said, and this is typical other skepticism, that the IDF will be able to achieve that goal, citing Hezbollah's military experience. But we're told the same thing in Gaza, too, and for all intents and purposes, even though there are terrorists still there, there always will be. There's no real uh, fighting uh, machine there in Gaza any longer with Hamas, because their weapons have been destroyed, as we mentioned the other day. Their, their leaders have been killed. Uh, the rest are on the run. Israel's in charge of the border there, the southern border, so munitions won't get across. There will be people smuggling and that. So it's, it's all getting done, uh, according to what's been uh, been been desired by Israel. Now, here's this things that what, what's important for us. Certain things must take place to set the biblical scenario in the last days. In fact, up to this point, we've seen, like we said, a number of signs fulfilled that were both predicted by the Bible, as well as those who took the scriptures seriously. And we can go down the list in our book, 25 signs were near the end. Sign number one, Israel will still exist in the last days. That's a prediction of scripture. And Bible students over the years said Israel will continue to exist as a nation. They were always a nation. They're a nation in exile until they had a modern state, but the nation continued to exist. And we see that. Uh, sign number three, they're going to come to their ancient homeland in the last days and form a modern state. We'll check that off. That happened in 1948. Um, sign number five, Jerusalem will be united under Israeli rule. We'll 
that happened in 1967. Uh, also, they will be uh, in the world spotlight as we see sign six, which is continuing to happen. And But there will also be, even though of all these things are true, a continual search for peace. They'll never be at peace. And this is precisely what is um, going on now. Now, more things are, have to fit uh, to uh, fulfill what the scripture portrays precisely what our world will be like. There's another book of ours that you want to look at, and, and, and I think it's been very helpful for a lot of people called Look Up, a timeline of 50 last days events, because we start with the dead in Christ rising, the rapture of the church, and then we have 50 different events that are going to take place still in the future, uh, culminating, of course, the last event, which is eternity, which is ongoing, but certain things still must take place. And now, as we've seen with our book, 25 Signs, that the fulfillment is in the process of happening. Some have already been fulfilled, some are being fulfilled. And so we need to know that. And so, again, that's all laid out for you. So please take advantage of it. It's a free download from our book, uh, educating uh, from our website, Educating Our World, under the heading of Bible Prophecy. And uh, please, like I said, it's there for your edification. Once you understand these things, it'd be very, very, very more helpful. Now, shifting gears a little bit, at the same time, when we got all these things happening, there's another sign of the time of the end called the apostasy or the falling away of the organized church. We got to mention that from time to time. Well, here we go with another story. Headline number three, Pope Francis, both Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, he said, are against life. This is the headline. Now, listen to why he argues that and how he does. Pope Francis told journalists on Friday that Donald Trump and Kamala Harris are both against life and Americans will need to choose in conscience next this November what is the lesser evil. During the flight returning from Singapore to Rome, the pontiff was asked what his advice would give to a Catholic voter. Faced with the choice, now get this, of a candidate who supports ending pregnancy and another who wants to deport 11 million migrants in the upcoming U.S. elections. And here's, here's, here's his comments. Both are against life. The one throws out migrants and the one that kills children, the Pope replied. Both are against life. I can't decide. I'm not American and I won't go to vote there. But let's be clear. Denying migrants the ability to work and receiving hospitality is a sin, a grave sin. The Old Testament speaks repeatedly of the orphan, the widow, and the stranger. Migrants, he said, these are the three that Israel must care for. Failing to care for migrants is a sin, a sin against life and humanity. He then went on to recall a mass city held at the U.S.-Mexican border near the Diocese of El Paso, where the migrant shoes who ended poorly were displayed, in other words, those that didn't make it across. He noted that the flow of migration within Central America, and many times they're treated like slaves because people take advantage of them. Migration is right, he continued. It's already President's sacred scripture in the Old Testament. The stranger, the orphan, the widow, do not forget this. Not stopping there, the Pope went on to address the question of abortion. Science says that one month after conception, all the organs of a human being are in our present. Everything he said, having an abortion is killing a human being. Whether you like it or not, the word is murder, the Pope said. The church is not closed-minded because it forbids abortion. The church forbids abortion because it kills. It's murder. It is murder. Now, here's the problem. Seeming to suggest a moral equivalent between the murder of the innocent children and denying an entry of a migrant at the border, the Pope said that neither seem to take precedence. Now, do you get that last line? They're both important. In other words, uh, to kill a, a human being in the womb is no less important as to allow 11 million people to come into a country illegally against the law, take the jobs of people who live here, uh, break, you know, again, break the rules, and he says that, you know, it's basically the same. The U.S. owes the people. We're not, again, we're not talking about migrants here. It's the wrong word. We're talking about illegal aliens. People don't like to use that word. They come in the country illegally. Now, many people have come into the country illegally. There's a way about doing it. And we're all for that. U.S. is a country of migrants who have come in legally here and have built a wonderful country. But the idea here is the key word is illegal. It's not right. And unless you have a border, you really don't have a country. And that's the real issue. But to make a moral equivalence between, uh, you know, sending back certain people that have come here illegally and uh, abortion is, is, is sickening that the Pope would do this. But it shows, again, sign number 19, the organized church will turn away from the faith, the apostasy of making the two equivalent here. And the Pope's already shown how irrelevant he is. And one of the reasons we, we mentioned this is because of like what we're doing on our timeless truths. So we're showing the Roman Catholic Church has no authority to speak for God. It is not the last word on, you know, 
in the world today, as much as they say it and believe it, the Pope is not speaking ex cathedra or from the chair infallibly about matters of faith and practice. He is not. He's a human being, a fallible human being who was chosen by other fallible human beings to be the infallible spokesman for the church. But uh, like we said, almost every week, for years and years, they had to, the people in the Vatican had to come about and said, well, the Pope really didn't mean what he said when he made a statement, contrary to not only scripture, but a past Roman Catholic belief. So the point is, we're seeing the world set up again, just like the Bible said it would in the last days. So again, please take advantage of our resources. Do not be surprised with all that. And eventually we're going to, um, you know, we'll be talking about some of the other things we're going to be doing here on our uh, website uh, uh, with our also our YouTube channel and our app. Um, some exciting things. We talked about learning Hebrew. We're going to be doing that. We'll talk about more of that in detail. We'll we'll have some um, more explanation of that. Both my daughters are right now and my wife too, are, we're learning conversational Hebrew, which is not the same as biblical Hebrew, but we're going to have the goal where we start talking back and forth. We're going to do it in Hebrew rather than in English. And it, we're able to do that. Uh, we just have to work on it a little bit. So anyway, that's kind of the short-term goal. We'll see how all that works out. So anyway, a lot of good things happening. I'm Don Stewart. We'll keep you abreast of the latest. And until next time, as always, may the Lord richly, richly bless.